Yeah, just like jump over the car. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. Should I powder myself? <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> Madison Odell is your typical teen, full of life and a dose of self-doubt. Somewhere along the lines, I lost the confidence that I like originally had. And I feel like social media is one of those factors. Do the ocean in the back. Okay. Well, you take them first. It's scary how good you are. <laughs> With her pals along the rocky shores of Newfoundland, Caitlin, Brooke, and Lauren spend hours together and hours on social media. Sean, are you editing? Oh, that doesn't look good. Gotta go back out. Taking everyone's faces in so they don't have double chin. <laughs> With photo editing apps, anything can be changed. Skin cleared, eyes widened, noses slimmed. Caitlin's particularly good at it. Resize everyone's eyes. Oh, oh. acne time. He's whitened. You gotta get rid of the dark circles. But the constant okay. pressure to look a certain way, always critiquing I pictures of herself, lighter. was not good for Madison's mental health. I think it's just like comparing yourself to others constantly. I'm like, I wish I looked like that. It's just every little detail you're trying to like, you know, try to be like them. What have you felt you should do or how you should feel? I felt like I should, I don't know, not eat as much as I did, like not enjoy the foods that I've always have enjoyed. It all creates the illusion of one beauty standard, a category where many simply do not fit. Thinking that I need to be short to be cute and have like a cute nose, that word cute is so, it, it sort of comes up so much. Hi, Holly. Hi. Let's just have a quick look. Sure. I'm just gonna sort of feel a few things here as well. In Vancouver, 16-year-old Holly Bradley is doing something some might find drastic. She was bullied growing up. So last February, Holly, with her mother Debbie's support, got rhinoplasty, a nose job. The hump is completely gone. It was really standing out before. It was very broad. Holly always hated her nose, says it didn't fit her face, and she saw models and influencers do the same thing. There's so many people out there that are getting these like things enhanced. Bella Hadid got her nose done, which I look up to her nose so much. It's gorgeous. Their noses were so small and dainty, and I always had that big hump, sort of, and the tip was pointed down more. Holly says the pressure to look a certain way is real, but that social media was also an inspiration. I feel like it shows people my age that, you know, it's it's okay to change the way you look sometimes to make yourself view yourself better. Did you have a lot of bruising after the surgery? No, I had maybe a bruise here. Okay. Holly's surgeon, Dr. Tom Buenasisi, has been a facial plastic surgeon for over 20 years and says he turns away half of the patients who want to see him. So it's been uh, about six weeks now yeah. since your surgery. Okay, and how have you been feeling? I don't think social media has much of an influence on the laws of physics. I can do what I can do. But what worries me is just that kids are seeing images or they're, they're wanting to look like uh, images they see on the internet or in social media that just isn't realistic. I, I think that the, my job is to communicate to patients, just explain to them you know, why it's not possible to look like that um, and also to, to be the, the voice of reason. Holly, you, you were always pretty easy yeah. that way. I think you had a good sense for what you thought was reasonable. Yeah. Um, you also took my advice. Which I really Dr. Buenasisi worked with Holly and Debbie for six months, slowing the process to ensure certainty and helping design a nose that would work with Holly's face. Of course, I, I go in with that, you know, vision of that swoop and that emphasized tip, but then you saw, I saw it on the computer and it was just, it was a, it was a better look for me. Yeah, I thought so too. Yeah. She's basically like, you know, trudging the way forward for other girls who maybe feel like they can't bring this up to their parents or they think it's, it's a negative thing asking for a surgery to improve their beauty or to improve just their sense of self going out into the world every day, right? Holly says she feels more like herself, but is still waiting to debut her new nose on social media. I haven't posted anything yet, but it's going to be coming soon because I'm just waiting for the swelling to go down just a bit. 
It's a question of expectations. Are they realistic? Some influencers have started challenging the beauty standard that makes people feel inadequate in the first place. We live in an age where almost all of the media that we consume is altered. Cara Roselle Smith is an Afro-Indigenous influencer in Brooklyn. When I was younger, I don't think I've ever talked about this before. I used to take this fridge um, magnetic clip and put it on my nose for like 10 to 15 minutes a day in hopes that it would get more narrow. She posts about beauty, culture, and often responds to comments from people who feel they don't fit in. So as a black indigenous woman, uh, getting this comment is a big reason why I do what I do and why I say what I say. Honoring your ancestors on your face um, and the beauty aspect, uh, that's something that I've really tried to get across in my messages. Last year, she had a video about plastic surgery go viral. Gorgeous, gorgeous girls love their wide nose and they don't need a nose job because they're already beautiful. I was just at home kind of minding my own business and logged on to TikTok. I actually logged on and saw that Bella Hadid had liked my video. When you look at everything that you're putting out there in the world, what do you want people to take away from it? Realizing there's not like one, a one fix. We really have to go within and realize like the standards of beauty that we've been fed and the things that we've been fed over time have contributed to what we think is beautiful and why we need to change anything in the first place. And if we can kind of deconstruct and unlearn that, um, then maybe the surgery or things like that aren't needed. Social media could be a tool for change as much as it may also contribute to the problem. And I think that that's true here with specifically young women, young girls, teens, um, like using these apps, it's kind of like integral into our lives now, but it's still a business and people are still kind of behind this and we are the product. Madison made a big decision a few months ago. She does not post any edited photos anymore. She wants to be a different kind of influencer. Wrote an article for CBC about it. She hit a nerve in her small community. What's, what's the response been to it? It's been really good. I've got a lot of messages um, like from parents, from like teens like me, young girls. It's like I'm glad like I'm not the only one like struggling with social media and what the expectations are and all this. All part of the ever more complicated process of growing up, being sure of your place in the world and how you appear to it. David Common, CBC News, St. John's, Newfoundland.